Welcome to the spotlight, the creator spotlight, the interview portion of the show with myself and Jeremy Lambert, as always. And today, our guest is someone I got to meet live in person in Atlanta, Georgia at GCW. And uh, a guy that you're going to be hearing a lot more from in the future because he's super innovative. A guy that I, I think is doing great things out there in the world of independent professional wrestling. A guy that's trained by AR Fox. And uh, yeah, guy that I'm really... Really looking forward to how you doing, man. I'm all right, man. I'm cool, you know, cooler than the other side of the pillow. I already know. <laughs> we but, appreciate you, know, you joining the, us. I appreciate it too. I got to get the gimmick in, you know. It's the <laughs> undeniable, the new generation innovation, ace of the WWE four, ace from the WWE four, soon to be ace of professional wrestling. Mister, please don't die. Holy shit, shout out to Crash Out Kid, the real deal, Terry Aki. Yes, sir. There we are. There's, there you go. There's there's the real deal intro right there from Terry Ock, from the man himself. Terry, Every time. <laughs> there you go. Hey, the, the, the first question I got for you is probably the most obvious question. You may have answered this a thousand times. I don't know. And I, I, I honestly don't know the answer. Why the name Terry Oh, yeah. I always answer this question. <laughs> I'm gonna start coming up with different answers every time. But nah, <laughs> the, like, <laughs> the honest like answer is like uh a uh, childhood friend of mine, uh, his name's Chaz. I shouted him last time uh, at Zach Reckline on uh, Instagram. Like, uh, we were just kicking it one day. Like, I was like in high school with him, and he was like, "Yo, like, I'm gonna start calling you Teriyaki. You got the sauce. You feel me?" And so I was like, "Oh yeah, I like that name," and I stuck with it. But like, my original name was Terry Guns because me and my brother was gonna be a tag team. But like, you know, he 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 has kids. He's older, like ten years older than me, so he fell out of like training as much. So I was like, Terry Guns doesn't sound as cool as like, you know, his name was Tommy. So it was Tommy Guns. That's cooler than Terry Guns. So I was like, I got to change it. And I was like, I'll just go with Terry Aki, see if it's stick. And it worked. Here I am Wait, now. Do, do you like teriyaki sauce, teriyaki chicken? Like, Is, is this part of your, your meals? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do like every time Panda Express, man, I got to get the teriyaki. <laughs> Say, that'd yeah, be wild yeah. if you didn't if you didn't eat teriyaki i actually had some teriyaki chicken earlier today it's funny it was it was a coincidence like i, w- I was uh i was going through some different like meal ideas and i saw the teriyaki chicken and i was like i'm gonna have this today then i was like i'm gonna review teriyaki later i'm gonna definitely have the teriyaki chicken today so and then then oh, i yeah. thought of the question i was like i wonder why he called him so teriyaki and that's why i asked uh, the question so there you go Hell yeah. I don't know why I made it when everybody starts spelling teriyaki how I spell it. You know what I'm saying? No more of the <laughs> I in there. Spell it like how I spell it. And I'll be on top. There you go. There you go. Uh, my first question is, are you okay as Mr. Please Don't Die after I – mean, I'm sure you saw the viral spot. You retweeted it. You you do the run up, flip over the top rope, and then the, the dive looked a little – the landing looked a little rough there. You good? Everything yeah. good? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I'm fine, man. I'm like, I'm like, uh, I'm like made out of elastic or something. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I'm kind of like, I guess you could say, like, in later, like, future, I'm probably not gonna be doing as crazy stuff as I do now. But like, right now, like, I just like, I live for the moment. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like there, and it's like I just I always like like that type of uh, high risk maneuvers. But sometimes I take too many risks. But right now, I'm just cooling. You know, I haven't died yet, so. <laughs> We I'm hope it doesn't here. happen, especially in the ring. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, don't jinx myself or nothing. No, Knock no. Knock on wood. Uh, yeah. like, when you do that, have you had any major injuries off of uh, the style that you do? Uh, not really, actually. I mean, my wrist. But I think I messed my wrist up off of drop kicks, so it's not really that bad. <laughs> but, I mean, like, off of all that stuff, I really, I think it's just adrenaline. And usually I don't land as bad as people think I do. You know what I'm saying? People are usually there to make sure that I'm not, you know, that was like, I tried to late tuck, but I shouldn't have late tuck. I should have just went for it. Yeah, that's but. actually something I never thought about that much until we started interviewing like a bunch of wrestlers here on the show is like <clears throat> kind of deciding part of your move set based on how often moves just hurt that you're doing. Like, P, I, we've talked to people that stopped doing 450s, for instance, because they kept hurting their their wrists. But so they would switch to like a moonsault or something because it's like, you know, a different kind of body part taking the impact. Is that something that like you're mm-hmm. constantly kind of kind of figuring out yourself where you want to do cool stuff, but then you're like, man, every time I do this, I'm like, I, this, this might not be worth it. Yeah, man. I never really had a move where I'm like, yeah, you know what? I don't want to do that anymore. At that, Well, at this stage, you know what I'm saying? I'm still like a year and a couple months into my career. 
So, like, right. I don't really have that many things that I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm done taking that. You know what I'm saying? Right now, I'm just, like, going for it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do this. 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 So, it all works. So, I'm just I'm cool with it right now. What, what's it been like, you know, blowing up so fast? Like, getting booked in such big companies and, and training at such great places. I mean, in just, you said just, you know, just over a year. That's, it's it's pretty, I mean, it's actually, it's very impressive, like, how, how well you're doing in such a short amount of time. Hell, yeah. Man, it's like a blessing, you know what I'm saying? Like, at one point, like, once I started getting to high school, like, I always wanted to be a wrestler, but start, by the time I started getting to high school, I was focused on other things. And I didn't really see this as, like, a realistic, like, career of mine, you know what I'm saying? But, like, after I got out of high school, you know, I got in a little whatever, whatever. And, you know, I started to – I was like, you know what, it's like I got to take the chance. This is, like, my plan A at that point. And so, like – and then it happened, and I just grinded as hard as I could, and I feel like it's a blessing, you know what I'm saying? I'm still humble. I just like, I just want more and more and more. You know, I'm 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 satisfied, but I'm not content. You know, if you know what I mean. Like, I'm still grinding as hard as I am when I first started. How did the uh, AEW bookings come about? You're on AEW Dark at this part of the Universal tapings. How did those uh, come together? Uh, we did uh, me, Jay Lucas, and Larry Lazard did the Nightmare Factory, and so through the Nightmare Factory, we met with QT Marshall, Cody Rose, Baron Black. And guys like that. And um, honestly, I remember Cody Rose sitting there and he was talking with the whole class. And he says to us, he's like, closed mouth, don't get fed. You know what I'm saying? And that was like the big thing. And so me, Jay, and Larry looked at each other and we're like, well, let's just ask about it. And so we asked him about it. And we asked, he gave us Sean Dean's um, information. We hit up Sean Dean. Sean Dean's really cool. Shout out to Sean Dean. I appreciate everything he uh, did for us. And from there, we just... It just start rolling in and it happened for us. What was it like being it being in the ring? You so you faced the boys and Dalton Castle and then uh varsity athletes. Like what's it like being in the ring with these guys who are basically television stars? Facts, it's it's really cool, man. It's like it's real it's real like it's really like it's like surreal to me, like that I'm even in that like in this position to be around people that I watched as a kid, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm around them often. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I am I was just sharing, like, you know what I'm saying? I was at Dark, like, guys like Kenny Omega, you know, Fox is there, William Regal, you know what I'm saying? I could keep, like, naming names of people I've seen there. And it's just surreal to me because it's like I'm I'm still a fan too. And so seeing these people is like, yo, it's crazy. This is crazy to me. Like, I don't want to just go mark out or nothing. But it is pretty wild to be just standing next to these type of people. Did you get any I'm advice ready. from from? Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. Uh, no, did you get any advice from any any of them or anybody backstage after before the matches? Um. Yeah, we usually get a lot of advice from guys like um. Don Castle, he liked he liked what we had. Um, Jerry Lynn, shout out Jerry Lynn, he gave us um a couple critiques and stuff like that as well. But like everybody back there is so friendly. Everybody's willing to like give you information if you're um willing to accept it. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, you were mentioning uh, like marking out, kind of you know, seeing all these people that you're such big fans of. I may have asked you this before, but I can't remember who who were some of your favorite wrestlers growing up, and were some of those names like that were backstage there at Impact or sorry at, at AEW. Um, well, my favorite wrestlers growing up was like I watched a lot of TNA. Like I loved wrestling, but when I like found out about TNA and like the X Division, that's what made me want to be a wrestler. So guys like AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, Low Key, Christopher Daniels. I seen Christopher Daniels, that was pretty crazy. Samoa Joe, that was pretty crazy. Um like Frankie Kazarian, Sanjay Dutt, Jerry Lynn, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of guys <laughs> I can name. It's just like, oh man. Even Jeff Jarrett, like, yo, Jeff Jarrett. Oh yeah. A legend, a literal legend. It's just it's crazy. It's insane, man. It's crazy. What a ride man. already. <laughs> it's man. crazy. Yeah, that that's awesome. I mean, Jeff Jarrett's one of those guys that I got to meet him a couple years ago, and he was like such a nice guy. Like the way he was going out of his way to, like he was asking fans if they wanted pictures with him. Like they weren't coming up to him. And he was going up to them and be like, "Yeah, I see you standing there. Like if you want some pictures, like I can sign some stuff." You know, like just such a nice guy. Um, you mentioned um other guys that you were there with. Larry Lazard and Jay Lucas, uh, two of your top team members. If you want to talk a little bit more about those guys and uh, you know put them put them over here on the show. Okay, okay, okay. I last time when I did the interview, I forgot to say Keelan Cole, the one of one Keelan Cole. Watch <laughs> out for him. I was a little I was a little drunk, so I, I, I was forgetting names. 
But I'm going to make sure I'll put that over right now. The D one of one Keelan Cole. Watch out for him. He's going to be big. All right. But Jay Lucas and Larry Lazar, those guys, like, we, like, they started a little bit before me, a couple months before me. But, like, as soon as, like, we, like, I started training there, we all just clicked. We all just clicked. Like, me, Dante, Larry Lazar, uh, Jay, and Blackjack, we all just clicked. And we just, like, we're just all cool with each other, you know what I'm saying? We're, like, practicing moves on each other. We're chaining every day, doing all the spots together. When it comes up to doing, like, uh, doing like uh, the spots, like, in training, we're all doing it together. But, like, me and Larry, we had, like, a matches, like, a millions of matches together. Like, he gave me one of my first practice matches when I first started. And then after I, like, debuted, I'm going on the indies. Everywhere is just like, all right, Terry, you'll wrestle Larry tonight. And it's like, all right, well, all right, bet. And then the next place is like, Terry, you'll wrestle Larry. And I'm like, oh, well, all right, bet. We can, you know what I'm saying? So we have really good chemistry. And me and Jay, like, we, like, we wrestled each other a couple of times, like about two or three. But we always just had some, it's like, I don't know, it's like a, like a chemistry outside of wrestling, you know what I'm saying? And then we became a tag team. So that was like, it just made sense for us to like be there. I don't know. <laughs> it was like it made sense for us to be a tag team. Like we like the way we clicked was like already there. And uh, you know, for those for those who haven't heard um, our interview for Fightful, so like a lot, actually a lot, a lot more people will hear this interview um, that we're recording right now. Um, but could you speak more to your training and the people you train with? Okay, I train at the WWA Four with AR Fox. Anybody you can name from the A4, they're all there. You know what I'm saying? From Bobby Flacco, Adrian Alanis, Liam Gray, uh, Kane pops up sometimes. Ruff pops up sometimes. You know, just a it's a it's a handful of cast of members, and we're all just in there. We're all like chasing the same goal, doing. You know what I'm saying? We're all all on the same road, just working as hard as we can. Fox is real like laxed. You know what I'm saying? So. You can he gives you like the freedom of like doing things you want to do on top of like him teaching you how to do something. He'll give you the freedom to do something and then he'll be like, all right, well, this is how you can do it better. And so that's what I like really love about that place. It's like we just it's just you know what I'm saying? It's like it's just like I don't know, it's like I don't want to say it's a playground, but it's basically like we just go in there and we have fun every day. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what it is. It's not like a boot camp or anything. It's like fun, like just go in there and have fun. It's a That's bunch of really about. creative guys too, and girls that are there. Like y'all are mm-hmm. putting your heads together, kind of off the really, really cool stuff. Indeed, it's really easy to. It's like, <laughs> like, like I said, we'll just chain. You know what I'm saying? We'll start off chaining. Like me and Dante will start chaining, and from there we'll be like, oh, you know, it'd be crazy if you do like this and this, this. It's like, okay, you want to record it? All right, record it. Wow, I'll be like, all right, man, I'm gonna do it this Thursday. All right, bet we do it Thursday, and now I'm starting to do it more. And now you know, now it's a part of my uh, repertoire moves and stuff. He does the same thing with me. Everybody's in there just, like, trying to be different. You know what I'm saying? Fox is, like, big on that, trying to be different, if you know what I mean. Do you have to? Do you ever have to get reeled in when it comes to that stuff? Because wrestlers are some of the most creative people in the world. Sometimes the creativity expands too much. It's like, maybe this is a bad idea for this moment here. Is there any, any time where Fox or anybody else would be like, you know what, maybe we can save that for down the line, and let's not try that today? Uh, I mean, sometimes I think about things and then when I get to practice and I try it, it's like, okay, maybe that's not physical, physically possible for me. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm not athletic enough to do something like that, or it's just like not physically possible. So it's a couple of things where I have to be like, all right, you can't do it. The other day I was like, what if like, uh, I like, I was like, what if I give somebody a poison Rana and a suplex at the same time? <laughs> And like I say it right, I say it, and then like I'm everybody, to it like right now. <laughs> yeah, it's like it was like a cool like way I thought I did get to it, like from Tilt to World. It's like crazy to even think about, but I thought about it. I was like, so I go to Jay. I'm like, yo, you think I could do that? And he's like, bro, what are you even talking about right now? Like, <laughs> yeah, man, I, that doesn't. I don't even get it. Like, nah, I'm not taking that. I was like, all right, bet I ain't even forget it. I uh, just scratched that one off the list. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's a it's a couple of things that's like that for sure. It's, it's perfect you brought that up too because like a perfect example of this is uh, i saw bobby flacco do the ar driver the other day which is like for it's basically it's like a vertebraker into it, it, it's like it, you, it's impossible to explain how he's doing it but it's like a yeah. vertebraker position into a driver but like he's 
but it's the same kind of thing. It's like two moves you would never expect to work. But when you see it happen, you're like, how the hell did someone come up with that? That's genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of, it's a lot of that going on in there. It's a lot of that yeah. going on. It's a lot of guys just coming up with crazy things. And it's like, damn, that's crazy. Sometimes I'd be like, damn, I wish I came up with that first. <laughs> how how often does something happen that like during a show, like GCW, for instance, like y'all go out there and like next thing you know, like Hunter Drake is doing, you know, a Spanish fly off of the balcony and stuff. And it's like, moment or like during show, how often do you feel like the, the need to try to one up someone else where you see something happen almost in real time and you're like, all right, that was cool. I, I got you though. Like I got, I'm gonna try something right now. Yeah, it's kind of like that's kind of like my whole thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, <laughs> yo, I gotta have the best match. I don't care where I'm at. I'm like, I gotta have the best match. And if I see something crazy, I'm like, damn, how can I do something even crazier? You know what I'm saying? But that's maybe that's just like my youth, my youthfulness, of me thinking like that. But how, yeah, how, so like that happens more often than that. I'm 21. Oh, 21, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I, yeah. I knew it was probably right. Yeah, you got man. Are you so good at 21, man? You got a, you got a lot to look forward to. Hey, you mentioned your athletic background as well, or like your athleticism. What is your athletic background? Like, did you play other sports growing up? Oh, I did. Uh, I did amateur wrestling. So I did freestyle. I did Greco, and I did uh, folk style. Yeah, very diff- very difficult sport. I, I did. Um, I believe it was folk style high high school wrestling um, yeah. here in Georgia. Um, so yeah, I definitely, I definitely respect that. That that's that's very difficult. High school wrestling is really slept on. Like people don't understand kind of like the discipline it takes when like everyone else yeah. is partying and stuff to like weigh in in like a Saturday morning. You know? Oh god, it's just a lot of grind. <laughs> it's like a lot of folk. I mean, it's very similar to professional wrestling. That's why I feel like it was easy for me to click because like it's very similar from watching how something's done to happening, having to like literally mimic every movement. You know what I'm saying? The focus, the grind, you know, everything I feel like is the same. It's like, it's one in one. And that's why I feel like it clicked re- like really easy for me. Did, but yeah, did I go, did that. I was going to ask you just because of your age, did you go pretty much from high school wrestling, like right into training for pro wrestling? Because like, that would be such a huge advantage to be in that shape going right into it without like the uh, Kind of a little bit, kind of. When I, when I got out of high school, it was during COVID. So, oh yeah. Man. I graduated 2020, so it was like COVID was going on. So I had to put, I put like a little halt on it. But then by uh, 2021, I was like, you know what? I just got to do it. Forget it. It's whatever. Gotcha. So 2021, when is that when you signed up for uh, 4A and then just immediately jumped into to that training? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I was, um, I actually went a year before. Like I was in high school still and I went to, uh, I pulled up to the A4 and I was going to start. But then I was like, nah, I ain't. you know what I'm saying? I was like, nah, it's cool. I ain't tripping, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then by like, a, I think it was damn near like a year, June. I can't remember the exact date, but I do remember the first Thursday show I went to. It was like June 10th. I went to, um, so I started in June. And then I went there. And it was just easy. It was just like, all right, you want to sign up? Bet. You want to get in the ring? All right, bet. Easy. <laughs> simple like that <laughs> and that's how my career started <laughs> and a4 yes, not not for a i apologize i don't want ar fox coming after me on that one. Oh yeah it's um, cool. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are some of your your goals in wrestling like whether short term or long term like whether a promotion you want to work for a person you want to work against just some overall goals in wrestling um right now I do want to get to Japan. I want to be like well traveled. So maybe that's long term. I want to be well traveled. I want to be able to say I wrestled in like Japan, Canada, you know, Mexico, all over the world. I do want to wrestle for a, a promotion in Korea because I'm um I'm black, white, and Korean. So I feel like it would be pretty cool to wrestle in Korea, just because like you know my like heritage or whatever. Um, people I want to work. It's like a long list of people I can name. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm always say Jordan Oliver because he's he's dope. Jordan Oliver's fire. Myra Reed too. He's pretty awesome. Speedball, Fox, um, Jay Malachi is pretty pretty damn good. I like him. I saw him at Battle Slam just the other day. Again, yeah, he's been coming around here lately. Yeah, really, really. Hell yeah, yeah. A lot of the Firestar. Uh, I'm not sure if he's. He, I'm pretty sure he trains at Firestar. 
But a lot of the North Carolina boys, they're really good. And it's like a lot of them that I want to mix it up with. BK Westbrook's another one I want to get a singles. You know, I wrestled him in a yeah. tag match with me and Jay and uh, Eric Royal, but I want to do like a singles because it's like a little, it's a little more um, personal to us, if you know what I mean. Sure. And um, yeah, I mean, I could keep going on with the people I want to wrestle. <laughs> Short term goals, though. Uh, I do want to do some stuff with WWE, hopefully. You know, like extra work or something like that. Really just get my face out there more. You know what I'm saying? And wrestle on um, the West Coast. Sure. I wrestle for GCW, but like different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like we got West Coast Pro to fight a whole bunch of good stuff out there that you could, you could be a part yeah. of. Um, so, you know, you mentioned a lot of great names there. Good shout out to BK Westbrook. We haven't really brought him much uh, up on the show. He's he's doing great out of like the Chattanooga area. Um, mm-hmm. The... Uh, there you you mentioned Jordan Oliver and I keep bringing this up but almost every single wrestler that we interview when we ask like wrestlers they want to wrestle or wrestlers who give them great advice or wrestlers they want to be like or wrestlers they just kind of like see backstage and they're like you know that's just kind of a guy that I want to you know it, Jordan Oliver always gets brought up every it feels like almost every single time right. can you speak any more to that because like it just feels like everyone's always talking about how Jordan Oliver is a guy that they want to wrestle and be like. He's, like, really good. Like, I don't, know, like you know, I don't know how else to say it. He's really good. Like, from, like, everything he does in the ring, I feel like it, like, all has a purpose. You know what I'm saying? Because now from, like, being a being a professional wrestler, from watching it as a fan, it's different. You know what I'm saying? So you're watching for different things at that point. So, like, little things that he does just is, like, real good. He gives people really, real good advice, too. He, um, you know what I'm saying? He watched a couple of my matches and gave me real good advice for that. So I do appreciate it. Shout out to Jordan Oliver. I appreciate that, too. But, like, you know what I'm saying? He's just really good. He's in his bag right now. You know what I'm saying? He's in his bag. He's in his glory. You know what I'm saying? Glory boys. Like, Chief Keith, you feel me? in his bag. So, shout out, to, shout out to Jordan Oliver. But, yeah, definitely, man. He's, like, really good. And I feel like you can learn a lot from somebody from them speaking about wrestling. But I feel like you can also learn a lot from people being in the ring with them. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, he gives me real good advice on matches that I have. But being in the ring with them, you know what I'm saying? Being able to go through the whole match structure and all that good stuff with them, then I feel like it'll like open my eyes to a lot of things. Cause I like to I like to get everybody's view on how they do certain things. And then I turn it into my own like little view. And so like that's, that's I'm trying yeah, to Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, so, I mean, he's like a young veteran too. Like I love those guys who've like right. been in the game for like a while, like years, but they're still like super young. Like Jaden Newman out of Chattanooga is the same kind of way. He's been wrestling since he was like 15, but he's, you know, he's like 21, 22 now or whatever. And it's like already this many years in. It's just, it's wild to think. Billy Starks will be the same kind of way and stuff. Nick, Nick, Nick Wayne and stuff. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just cool always hearing Jordan's name pop up like that. He's definitely somebody that, oh, there we go. Okay. We're good. Um, yeah, he Jordan Oliver is definitely somebody that a lot of people put over, and a lot of people have said kind of what you said of like he get he's willing to give feedback and advice and everything. Like, can you share some advice that that he's given you on some of the matches? Um, it's a lot of little minute details, you know what I'm saying? Like he, uh, I remember him saying something about come comebacks. It was like, you know, everybody fires up in comebacks, you know what I'm saying? And that's like the whole thing. But he's like. The, the the fire dies after the comeback. He's like, you should keep the fire all the way through after that. You know what I'm saying? And that's like little things that nobody really like pays attention to. You know what I'm saying? Because you could go, oh, big comeback, John Cena comeback, oh, big five knuckle shuffle. After that, it's like everything settles. Like, nah, it shouldn't settle. It should be up here all, the whole time. It's like, it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Because it's the, it's the end of the match. Like, this is literally the fireworks. This is, that, this is the main course meal kind of to the to the, you know what I'm saying, the the appetizer. And then, you know what I'm saying, all the way through the whole meal, this is like the main course, like the steak. So you want the steak to be like the best part. <laughs> Little things yeah. like that, chaining. Oh, I don't know if we've lost, lost Terry. Lost for a second. Yes, wasn't sure okay. if that was on my end, your end, or. That's okay, We're good. it's, it's okay. refreshing. There he is. Sorry, Terry, right, we lost for a second, we're good. <laughs> You're talking, you're, you're, you're talking about chain like getting like you're chaining and then that was kind of yeah. like where it cut off oh yeah yeah he was like being more aggressive like with the chaining you know what i'm saying 
I did like amateur wrestling. I don't really use that a lot, but I'm gonna start using it more in like in like chaining and stuff like in my matches more. But like being more aggressive instead of being like ah ah, let me take this now. Ha ha, I got you, buddy. Oh, you got me. You know what I'm saying? Little things like that making making stuff more of a struggle. But you know what I'm saying? It's everything everything's good information. You know what I'm saying? From whoever it gives it to you. You, you know mentioned you mentioned uh possibly doing WWE extra work. I know sometimes they, they contact people and then they're not used in, in any capacity. Have you been contacted by them and just been in catering, but not used on television? Oh, no, 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 no. I never, uh, I haven't even hit them up. They haven't contacted me. I haven't hit them up yet though, but I feel like, um, I, I will soon. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like, I don't know if it's like, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Cause it's just, well, everything's a big of a deal, but like, you know, I feel like I want to get more ready to like be presented in, in, you know what I'm saying, in that way. I'm, I feel like I'm ready, but like at the end of the day, you know, you still have those self, self-doubts and stuff like that, but you know. Even, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've, you've seen the video. You, you shared the ring with this man. You could be the security guard who is shoved by, um, I was gonna say, you shared the ring with Ricky Starks who was punked out by Ryback. Uh, mm-hmm. The security guard, MJF, who was shoved by Samoa Joe. It's like, you never know where those beginnings are, are gonna start at of just popping up randomly on WWE um, as doing extra work. And then next thing you know, you're AEW world champion or a staple of AEW oh, television. God. Exactly, exactly. That's what I was saying. Like one thing, like, like uh, you were saying, like short term goals, like getting my face out there more, because like I I do that now still, but like, but getting it out there to more like, I don't know, like I guess you can say national, like global level to get my face out there and like actually put my face out there. But I mean, yeah, I definitely want to do that. So I definitely just gotta. It's really up to me. I just gotta gotta hit them up. I'm kind of just not doing that right now. I don't know why not, but I will. I will definitely. I'm gonna do it after this. Uh, Right. shoot the shot i mean shoot, shoot <laughs> I the shot you, you know the, the yeah. worst thing the worst thing they can do is say no and then in that mindset you're just like all right i'm gonna show you why this is a mistake on your part and i'm gonna keep right. going actually you know what i lied i've hit up gabe sapolsky before <laughs> you know what i hit up gabe sapolsky but he said he'll use me he'll try to get you know what I'm saying whatever whatever the whole circumstance but yep I forgot I did that. I did hit up Gabe Sapkowski. <laughs> but I'll do it again. I'll send it. I'll send another one. Send a, send a message. It, it never hurts. Thanks. It never hurts. Oh, God. Yeah. I was going to ask you, how did the GCW come about? Did you just hit up Brett? Um, GCW, they came to, they're coming to Atlanta. I was going there anyway. But uh, Billy Starks, actually, shout out Billy Starks. Billy Starks was like, yo, Brett's looking for people for this um." The scramble, you fly, so you want to do it? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm down. Hell yeah, I'm down. You feel me, GCW? What? And it's only funny because I did an interview like a month before for Action on, I think it's um the Ball Monkeys podcast, and they asked me what's a short term goal for you, and I said I def I want to wrestle on GCW. And then a month later, like this is like during my like first year anniversary, like August is like August, like sometime in like the 19th, I think is my first year anniversary for like pro wrestling. Like, I think the show was, like, the 21st of August. Like, they're like, yo, you want to do this? I'm like, hell yeah, I want to do it. And that's that's how – ever since then, it was just, like, I'm following you around. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm <laughs> trying to make my face, like, a part of this um this promotion. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. And how, what was the experience like in Center Stage in Atlanta? I, that, I, I love that venue. I, I think it's just perfect for GCW shows. It's fire. It's dope. It's, like, a whole different, like – you know what I'm saying? It's a it's a vibe for real. I feel like I I really hope they do more shows in Atlanta because like I feel like this is like this is like a it's a prime place for wrestling because like a lot of places don't really come here. So if they keep coming often, then it's gonna be pretty dope. Certain stage is pretty fire. The first time that it was like a movie. That was like probably the best scramble I've been in, and I've I'm, I've been in about a million scrambles now. You know what I'm saying? I know my way around the scramble, but that was probably one of my favorite scrambles that I had. You know. But um, yeah, center stage is definitely fire. We did the the Spanish the Spanish boy off the balcony. Come on now, who else did that? Yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody awesome. else did that one yet. Dude, it was funny that night. It was funny because you know how that's set up where there's like there's like doors like right behind where that move takes place and everyone's laying. There's doors to concessions. Like you buy beer right behind where that happened, and I I walked around and I didn't know everyone was still laying there, and I thought they had cleared it out already. At one point, I opened the door. And like no security stopped me. And I was like, 
oh, that's everyone, like, right there in front of me. I got to go around the other way. But I was right – I almost walked right on top of y'all. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was I, – I love that venue. And, hey, well, what's your experience like as a part of um, – championship oh there you go championship district wrestling with uh cdw our boy jack jameson um i I met you at that show for the first time what was that like uh doing those shows um you can repeat it again i can hear you oh yeah sure so oh yeah no worries so on a I was just asking you the, because the first time I met you um, in person was at a CDW show, Championship District Wrestling here in Atlanta, mm-hmm. um, and we've had Jack Jamison, Jamison Ryan, on the show many times. Um, what was your experience like um, work, working with that company? Oh yeah, it was pretty dope, man. The district was fire. That was a, that's a nice place too. Like you feel me? That's a nice venue too. I wish I could have jumped off that balcony. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would have been oh, yeah, that would have yeah. been perfect. God, but it was really nice, you know what I'm saying? That, like, um, most of the guys from there that was working those shows were guys that trained at Nightmare Factory, and we we did the um, we went through that system, so a lot of those guys were, were cool with, you know what I'm saying? We knew about so going there, you know, it was pretty, it was just easy, just do your stuff, you know what I'm saying? You know, the back locker room is pretty cool because you already know the guys, you know what I'm saying? You're all you're familiar with everybody that's there, basically, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it was pretty dope. Yeah, I, I figured you're in Atlanta right now, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think I figured I figured because the the um the sun it's, it's the your because I'm in Atlanta as well, so we're both. I'm looking out my window and our everything's gotten darker at the same exact time as we're doing the interview. So I was like, oh, he's got to be up the street. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Indeed. Yes, sir. Um, you guys are out here talking about the sun. I'm trying to this Atlanta bring this weather, light. Man, it was, I mean, it was a here. great day outside today. It was, it, was, it, was, it was pretty good. It was pretty good out here today. It's usually a little, uh, I, I wake up at like three every day, but it's pretty cold. <laughs> but like, you know, uh, get a little steezy by the time it turns like about uh, 10. You know what I'm saying? Wait, you wake up at 3 a.m. or p.m.? 3 a.m. I got it. I got I work at UPS. Like That's my shoe job. And then I work at a restaurant from like 10 p.m. to like. Like six, seven. Oh yeah. yeah. So you're really grinding. You got two jobs and the wrestling. Damn. Oh yeah, man. You gotta put you feel me? You can't <laughs> stop, won't stop. Never. I gotta put in the work. Earn it. I I was gonna ask what you do on your downtime, but I don't know if you have downtime outside of just this trip. Not to sleep. really. <laughs> I, I, I don't even sleep. That's like my girlfriend Jazzy Yang, she's always like, Bro, you gotta sleep. I'm like, I don't got to, like, I don't have to. <laughs> I just don't have to. Like, I don't know. I got a problem. I just don't sleep. I won't go to sleep until like 12, and then I got to get up at 3 anyway. So it's like, you know. Okay, so this is a this is a 7 degrees of, of separation. You just mentioned your girlfriend, Jazzy Yang. You have teamed yeah. with, in, in your last match, you teamed with Yo-Ya. Yo-Ya has beef with Jimmy Yang. Do you know oh, about yeah, yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. And can you, can you <laughs> mitigate this? <laughs> Hey, hold on. Let me turn the light on so people folks can see me. Oh, okay. <laughs> nah, I ain't for hey, oh bro. I ain't even. I, ain't, I don't know about none of that. I know they be saying funny stuff on the IG, but this is pretty funny. I ain't know that. It's crazy. God damn it, Yo Yo. <laughs> yo Yo. When I, I talked to brother. him. <laughs> I talked to him a couple of months ago and he's like, I want to team with Jimmy Yang, but he keeps calling me out. He keeps calling me names and stuff and disrespecting me. So I did not oh, realize man. this, this seven degrees of separation until you mentioned who your girlfriend was. I was like, all right, well now I got to see if we can, we need, we need someone to be a mediator here. We need to bring Yo-Yo and Jimmy together. Thanks. That'll be a team. <laughs> Yo-Yo Yang. Come on though. Yeah, go there we go. <laughs> you did. It'll be fine. They go they going to figure it out. <laughs> Maybe they got to wrestle first, you know what I'm saying? They get a singles match, and then there we go. Ball rolls after that. Earn earn some respect there. Earn some respect. For the... Indeed, indeed. <laughs> oh, that is that's tremendous. Um, uh, what, what type of music and stuff do you listen to, to to get pumped up or anything like that? Oh, man. Like, uh, what do you mean for, like, before, like, matches and stuff like that? Be- before matches, before a workout, or even if you just, you know, go go into the job to, to get, get energized, get ready to work at the restaurant or UPS. Man, I listen to everything. I ain't gonna lie. I listen to everything. I like a lot of old school music, you know, like Curtis Mayfield, Otis Redding, Bill Withers, and stuff like that. But I do listen to a lot of trap music. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> a lot of trap music. A lot of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? 
Like uh Ola Runt, you know what I'm saying? Rollo, free Rollo, he hard. A lot of a lot of more guys, like G Herbo. I'm from Chicago, so I listen to a lot of Chicago music too. You know what I'm saying? Chief Keys, Juice World, Lil Bibby, Young Pappy, RP Young Pappy, a lot of guys. But like uh before matches, like I don't really listen to music before matches a lot. If I do, I listen to some Wide Fan, like Wide Fan Lucci. He hard too. But like usually I just like wait until my music hit. Cause like my song, the Joel Santana song, that's like that's like shoot one of my favorite songs, you know what I'm saying? From like Joel Santana. So when I hear it, I sing the beginning. Like the whole before I go through the through the curtain, I'm singing the beginning. Like, yeah. Sick of this sit with it, how vivid this picture is me. Gifted and living it. No gimmicks the images. I spit and deliver it like no one that's living shit. I'm like, yeah, let's get it. They get me hype. I'm go. like, yeah, let's go. Walk out and I'm like, yeah, I'm the real deal, Terry. Let's go. Like it gets me, like it gets me going. That's awesome. Hey, that 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 reminds me actually. I forgot to ask, uh, sorry, I forgot to ask. Um, experience is a battle slam. I've seen you there as well. I think I think it froze. Yes, I think it froze for a second. But it we'll get, we'll get usually it resets pretty quickly, which is which is good. It's, did that you totally the... reminded me. I was like. <laughs> Music. I've ever seen him at Battle Slam. <laughs> did he use the uh, Joel Santana song at Battle Slam? Did, Jensen, did you recognize so. it? I yeah. believe so. Sorry, Terry. I think we lost you for a second. Are you back? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm back. No, okay. I was just putting over music. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I was. Uh, I was just saying. You. You totally reminded me talking about all this music. I forgot to ask you about your experience working with Battle Slam because I've seen you there live as well. Oh yeah, Battle Slam. That was. You feel me? Shout out Battle Slam. It's pretty cool. You know, Baron Black, you know, he got whatever going on, but, you know, it ain't none of my business. He cool with people, you know what I'm saying? Um, it was fire how they tried to, you know what I'm saying? They mixed music, you know what I'm saying, with wrestling. That's definitely pretty cool because I feel like music and wrestling has a lot of, like, um, similarities from being, like, you can be independent to being signed and, you know what I'm saying, being – you know what I'm saying? Unseen and things like that, like that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it was pretty it was a pretty cool um experience, definitely. Little Scrappy. I met yeah. Little Scrappy there. That was pretty dope. Watch <laughs> Little Scrappy give motherfuckers rock bottoms and stuff. I'm like, damn, this is crazy. Yeah. It's too far. I was telling Baron, yeah. I was like, I was telling him after one of those shows, because there was one event where they had Bill Scrappy and Trillville both there. And I was like, I was like, man, I saw these guys live performing when i was in high school here like this is surreal seeing these guys wrestling and you know, i think it was 2022 at the time but um but yeah i i agree with like the music crossover and so i think it's a cool concept so yeah it just reminded me to ask about right. that since we're talking about music so yeah uh, yeah for sure definitely shout out to uh, man terry we usually get people out of here with a question about the coolest thing in the room but you are you're not currently Position in, in your room. room. I don't know if you could. <laughs> I don't know if you could show off anything in your car that, that you were proud oh, of. Oh man, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Shit, damn. I mean, I got this here tattoo on my hand, right? Yeah, yeah. What's yeah, it? yeah. What's the tattoo? What's the tattoo? Oh uh, yeah, it says love one way, and then you flip it and it say hate. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's called an anagram, right? love or hate you know what i'm saying bow so it's like you can either see love or you see hate but you know either way it's still the same thing it's the same tattoo let's get it that's about the coolest thing i got other than that you know i don't know <laughs> oh so we have another question and i'll ask this <laughs> one to you and like okay oh he's gonna do it yeah i don't ask everybody but i feel like i might get a i might get i might get a tally on my end with you maybe i don't know i'm losing i knew that's bad. why you're gonna do it I knew so it. All right. So we have, we've asked quite a few people this hypothetical question, and this isn't, this isn't a, a wrestling match we're talking about. This isn't a hypothetical, like what we've seen on television, like street fight or false count anywhere or something like that. Um, this is a, a legitimate street fight. No rules. We're talking like open field on like a, like a soccer field, 
no boundaries, no time limits. Oh, because, shit. Okay. Get into it. All okay, right. Okay. Man. Pure, pure skill, cardio, whatever you want to say, all that makes it. Jensen, together, don't, don't, form. don't, don't throw okay. these caveats in there to try to influence. I'm, the I'm trying to paint the I'm trying to paint the picture of what we're talking about here. <laughs> this isn't just like a, you know, this isn't there's no weapons involved. This okay. Who would win in a hypothetical street fight in this scenario? Okay. Eddie Kingston or Cody Rhodes? Oh man, that's a good question. <laughs> All right, look, Eddie Kingston, you feel me? He 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 might know something. You know what I'm saying? Cody Rose did amateur wrestling in high school, so he got that as a background. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when it come to that, I don't know how much uh training Eddie Kingston got, but I'm pretty sure he know how to throw these bitches. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Cody Rose, you know what I'm saying? Shout out Cody, man. He's like one of the coolest dudes I've met in wrestling. I don't know, you feel me, how where his hands like, where his hands at. <laughs> Eddie Keystone might got them hands, you know what I'm saying? But Cody Rose, he he know how to wrestle, so he can work around all that. But that's a that's an actual that's a good question. I don't know. I might I might I might lead toward Eddie Keystone, but I feel like wrestling's got like a little advantage because like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Damage I, and discipline yeah. and stuff like that. Oh no! I we might, need, a, oh, we need an official to... answer, Terry. We need an official <laughs> answer. Damn! <laughs> I might have to go with Cody Rose, man. So... Oh! <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! You're like the only other person who's with me on this. Thank you. Thank you. I go with Cody Rose for the one time. Shout out Cody Rose, man. Shout Thank you. Out. This was a combo of like we didn't have you in a room, so we couldn't really get like the favorite thing in the room. And I was like, you know what? This guy's right. trained with Cody. I think. I think he's going to side with Cody on this one. I think I'll get someone else on my side. I side, so. I side with Cody for this, but I ain't going to lie. Eddie Keystone might got them. He might got them hard bitches, so I don't know. Listen, I'll say Cody wins the fight, but Eddie will win the war because, like, after the fight's over, Eddie's going to get up and, like, it's not going to be good. Spinning back fist? Yeah, yeah. That shit is over, boy. It's over. It's over. Man, I, I, listen, I, I'll – Thank you for answering that question. We <laughs> oh, sure, that. Man. Yeah, and by the way, we do not have any heat with Eddie Kingston. We love Eddie Kingston uh, on the show. This is just I don't a very want heat with him either. No, 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 <laughs> none of us do. Um, it's just it was a it was a it was a stupid hypothetical question we asked one time a while back, and it's just kind of stuck. And almost everyone says Eddie. So thanks, guys. Nice, I feel it. Like, I thought okay. he was about to ask me who would win between me and Mike Tyson. I was about to oh, like, no. I was waiting for I it. I was like, put you in that spot. I'm gonna go <laughs> up. I'll show you something. Over. My, I'll just get it. <laughs> I'll show you something in my room. You might recognize these. You got Larry, Larry Lazard, the classic. Oh yeah, that's dope. Yeah, Shout yeah. out Larry, man. Yeah, Lock he, in. He, he he hooked me up when I saw him at uh, at Battle Slam this last time. He gave me some stickers and a in a wristband, so I appreciate that. Right. Oh yeah, I see them action figures on your wall too. Oh dude, I'm surrounded by them, but I've got dude. All these are signed behind me and stuff, man. Like I, I, I got see. I got uh, I that's some, those in. are some uh, signed GCW posters. You were at some of these events, I think. So. Oh yeah, thanks. I hope to die. Them yeah, toy yeah. biz guys back there though. My brother used to have like when I was a kid. My brother had those. Like when he was a kid, I used to go crazy with them boys. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, man. WCW baby. That, that's my um. Yeah, I've got a uh, Bret Hart, Lex Luger, Goldberg, Kevin Nash, and Scott Hall all signed in that. And then I've got a signed Sting Ninja Turtle when they did that, that crossover, like the Raphael Sting. So I've got that signed right over here. Then I've got signed AEW, like Cody and Brandy and Paul. I actually got a signed Eddie Kingston right over there, as a matter of fact. So there you go. Shout out to shout out to Eddie. But uh Eddie Kingston, man. I appreciate the the shout out on the action figures, man. I could talk to you all day about that. That's cool. You that's cool you knew the WCW figures. You're oh, like, yeah, yeah, you're, you're too young to even know about that. Yeah, I'm too young, but my brother, you know, he was born like he's like born ninety two, you know what I'm saying? So he grew up with all that stuff. And then like as as I got older, like he just gave me all of his like old action figures. And so like I forget which Bret Hart it was. It was the one where he came with like the Tommy gun. Yeah, that one. Yeah, I remember that for sure. Yeah, that shit was dope. I used to play with that shit all the time. That shit was fire. Yeah. Yes, they had a whole line of those where it was like wrestlers with like with like weapons and stuff like that for WCW. Just random ass stuff. Yeah. Man. Hell yeah. I love that. That's a great thing to end on, on this on this show. Hell right, yeah. Terry, we we appreciate you joining us, man. Where let the people know where they can find you at on social media or upcoming bookings or anything like that. All right, man. Look, Bow. Okay. The real deal teriyaki on Instagram, the real deal teriyaki on YouTube, real one uh teriyaki on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I don't use it a lot because I don't be on Facebook. But Teriyaki on Facebook too. 
Um, I got a website, teriyaki.com. I got to put all my merch up there. It's just placeholders right now, but I'm going to put my merch up there soon. I said this last interview, but I'm going to definitely do it. All right, so y'all can look out for that. Uh, I got a show Friday. It's a Lucha show. I think I got an outside hero. Some guys I train with are pretty cool guys. You know what I'm saying? Outside. Shout out to the now. Um, next day, big six-man match. I can't say who me and Jay teaming with. You feel me? But it's against Northside and Rico Gonzalez. I'm just going to say it's going to get real dangerous, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to the to my twin. But, yep, that's about uh, all I got going on right now. I got a lot more bookings, but I got to go through a whole list to try to read them. <laughs> well, every, everybody can can follow Terry. All the links are down below uh, once this video gets posted. All in the description. Right. Follow, follow Terry. Support him. Doing doing big things, and I like uh, I like your Twitter feed. I'm put it over fast because you retweet a lot of stuff, and you try to promote other people and other like friends and just independent wrestling and stuff. So I really like when uh, other people do that. So oh yeah, man, that's all it's about. You know what I'm saying? We all got to yeah. use our platforms to try to build everybody else's platforms. You know what I'm saying? I was just about to say it before, uh, but but I didn't know you're gonna end with that. I was gonna say shout out Fightful too, man. Fight with Fightful, goddamn, they they going crazy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, thank uh, you. Fightful. We're, we're trying. Know. We're trying. Thank you. Thank you again, Terry. Uh, again, everyone follow him on social media. We really appreciate it, man. Um, guys, we'll be right back here on the spotlight.